very interesting the chakra balancing and everything so if you guys want to know more and want to want to learn more this time i'm going to introduce you another facilitator he's the author of intuitive within community leader of mysterium philippines a husband and a father he is considered by many as the leading tarot authority in the philippines and an intuitive development coach by nature let's give him a warm welcome Clap your hands for Mr. Robert Rubin. Good morning, History Con 2018. Round of applause for everybody who's here, who basically braved typhoons and torrential rains just to be here. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the tarot throughout the years. But the thing about it, since it's History Con, I got to talk a bit about the history of the tarot. But at the end of my slides, I'm going to be inviting three lucky souls up to the front, and I'm going to read your tarot live on stage. Who would like that? Let's see some round of applause. Round of applause if you'd like to have your tarot read live on stage. So you got to sit here if you're within these walls. At the end of the presentation, we're going to be talking about tarot, and I'm going to show you a forecast of things to come. So for a little bit of a background, I've been reading tarot for 22 years, okay? And when people look at me, they look at me and they say, Rob, you don't look like a fortune teller. <laughs> That's because I'm not a fortune teller. <laughs> I'm actually a tarot consultant, and I take it very, very seriously. I really love the idea of bringing a semblance of empowerment and clarity to everybody that I work with. All right? So if you're interested in that, this is the talk that you want to be with. So today's talk is called Tarot Throughout the Years by me. Next slide, please. All right. Now, when you think of tarot reader, what comes to mind? This thing, all right? You expect me to have a turban, a crystal ball, missing one eye, and I'm going to tell you you're going to die, right? <laughs> but when you really look at it, the tarot has evolved since its discovery in the 13th century, all right? When you think of tarot, a lot of you think, oh, that's Tagakiapo, that's Madame So-and-So, this and that. But in the past hundreds of years, or maybe even a thousand years, Tarot has turned from something else, from a circus sideshow, into an actual avenue of personal development, empowerment, and healing. All right? Because when you have peace of mind, you have healing as well. Next slide, please. Now, like I said, ever since its discovery, this is what you'd expect, right? When you heard the word tarot reading, you're expecting me to have a turban. Walk in here, call myself Lord Zoltar or uh, Master Hoodoo Voodoo or something like that. But in fact, tarot, next slide please, has evolved from this into a more interpersonal experience. Believe it or not, tarot as a whole, ever since its discovery in the 13th century, has gone from fortune telling to guidance. From, uh, how do I say, set in stone to optional. In other words, the readings have become more about showing you your trajectory and less about telling you what you're stuck with. Because a lot of people tend to come to me and they say, Oh, Rob, I am kind of interested in tarot cards, but I don't want to hear anything bad, right? Everybody says that. Oh, don't tell me anything bad. <laughs> and truth be told, the tarot doesn't tell you anything set in stone. And if it's one thing that I want to share with everybody here is that in 23 years of reading the tarot, I have never, ever come across a reading that could not be changed, both giving and receiving the reading. Yes, I actually have my cards read as well, all right? What do I mean by that? In other words, any kind of reader, if they're worth their salt, will show you your options, your probability, your cause and effect, but at the end of the day, they will leave the decisions up to you. Example, if I tell this VIP here, sir, Next week, no matter what you do, it's in the stars. You're going to lose all your money in the casino. Now, where do you think he's not going to go next week? He's going to avoid the casino. So if you're into tarot reading, if you're into tarot consultation, always remember that no reading is set in stone. What I would do, I would actually say, sir, next week, avoid the casino. Okay? It's not good for you. You've been warned. Because as one of my dear friends taught me, the tarot is not... A, a book where everything is engraved, but it's kind of like your Waze app on your phone. Who here is familiar with Waze? Raise your hand, right? It shows you where the traffic is, where the floods are, but if you want to go into it, go right ahead. The choices are completely up to you. More importantly nowadays, next slide please. The need for gimmicks in tarot consultations is no longer necessary. 
In other words, I don't need to come on stage wearing a cloak looking like Gandalf. I don't need to give myself meaningless titles like master, lord, shaman, hoodoo, voodoo, light worker, whatever. Because at the end of the day, all I am is a servant to others. People ask me, but Rob, you've been reading the tarot for 22 years. Should we call you master? No way. Okay, I tell my students that all the time. Should we call you Lord? Lord of not. People keep calling me sir, and I don't know when I was knighted, but I'll stick with that if you, really, if, if you really insist on having that. So nowadays, for a more genuine experience with the reading, you need to look away from gimmicks and look more towards, does this person really want to help me? Do they really empower me? Do they really make me feel good about myself? Or for lack of a better word, can I trust them? Next slide, please. Okay, before, from a, to, for, from a form of fortune-telling, the tarot has evolved to something that can be used for self-discovery. Yes, even without having the divinatory side of tarot, you can tell a lot about a person just by what their favorite tarot card is. Like me, for example. My favorite card is the emperor, okay? And if you know anything about the tarot, you'll, say, you'll know that that resonates with me a lot. Secondly, business development. Yes, Tarot can actually predict to a small degree the probability of something happening. But at the end of the day, it's completely up to the consultant. A lot of business developers nowadays have feng shui consultants. Now, more and more business developers actually have tarot consultants to know more on the short term the cause and the effect of the things that are happening. Third, corporate trainings and entertainment. And this is where we have a blast. Because at our Mysterium Philippines booth, we actually do this for corporate parties, personal invitations, per personal events, in order to bring a semblance of uh, mystique and at the same time entertainment to everybody. Because since we advocate the idea of the positive tarot experience, more and more people want to have us at our events. Because nobody would invite us if, I gonna, if I'm going to tell you, oh, you're going to go bankrupt and you're going to die of cancer in two weeks, right? That's not what we call a positive tarot experience. Instead, we will show you what your options are and what you can do in order to make your dreams a reality. Fourth, and like I said, thanks to the lo my loving wife, I've learned that tarot can actually be a tool used for healing and therapy. That by simply understanding how the cards affect you and how you respond to certain things, you can actually as a whole experience a whole new level of self-awareness and healing. And last, and my favorite, empowerment and clarity. People ask me time and time again, Rob, what do you offer in your readings? I tell them, empowerment, clarity. If you leave my session feeling bad about yourself, feeling hopeless, then I failed totally. I want to give you hope. I want to give you peace of mind. I want to show you what your options are so that you can live the life that you deserve. Hashtag intuitive within. <laughs> Next slide, please. Now, for those of you who want to experience tarot, we're located here right in front of Mal um, Maliari's exhibit. We have tarot readings there till 10 p.m. tonight for 300 pesos. But if you are of the elite few, who want to learn tarot, we're opening our next Intro to the Tarot certification course at the Mysterium Learning Center this September 9th, I believe, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's a six-week-long program in which we teach and develop those who want to have a better understanding of how tarot works on a personal, a professional, and a therapeutic level. But enough with the historical stuff. Who wants to get their tarot cards read? Raise your hands. Come on, round of applause. Okay, so three lucky people. I'm a man of my word. I am going to choose the first person now. Please raise your hand if you want to come up on stage. Richard, bring this nice man up, please. Yes. One down, two to go. Now, the mechanics of this is simple. If you've watched my show, Tarot Thursdays, you can ask me any question. Anything you'd like about any topic under the sun, just no dates of death and no lottery numbers, okay? Because if I knew lottery numbers, I'm not sharing them and dates of death are just morbid. So a round of applause for this brave individual. So what's your name, sir? Johnny. Okay, and what's your question for today? Uh, about my career. Career, what do you do for a living? I'm a Bitcoin trader. What? Bitcoin trader. Oh, Bitcoin, all right. Round of applause for Bitcoin. <laughs> Cryptocurrency at its best. All right. So he's asking me about his career, and I'm going to draw him one card for Johnny today. And you have the Nine of Pentacles reversed. Remember, Bitcoin is still in its ideological phase, okay? 
In other words, people believe it and people also don't believe in it. They also did the same thing with something called Apple, Google, and the internet. You know you believe in Bitcoin. You know you believe in crypto. You need to stay true to this because your patience will pay off. At the end of the day, even though it's currency, you're not in it just for the money. You're in it for a deeper ideology. So knowing that, see this through to the end. You will not regret it. Round of applause for Sir Johnny. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Two more people. Please raise your hand. All right, this lady, come on up. Round of applause. Looks like I got people's attention. <laughs> Round of applause for this brave, lovely soul. Your name, please? I am Jensen. Jensen, what's your question for today? Let me guess, love life? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. What's the um, career? Okay, career and love life are the most possible, and let's look, a moment, possible, the most popular. I'm going to draw one card for you to show you about your career in the remaining of the year. Okay, sweetheart. You need to have fun. You're taking yourself way too seriously, okay? You're not running for president. You're doing actually a role where you can enjoy yourself. Remember why you got into this to begin with, okay? You didn't get into this to be stressed, to grow old, to gain weight. You got into this because you are enjoying yourself. And as long as you keep that in the forefront, greater things are going to come your way. Like my wife said previously, gratitude is the power of all manifestation. So what do you have to say about that? That's exactly correct. All right, thank you very much. Round of applause for this lovely lady. One last lucky soul will come up front and have their cards read. All right, lady here, please. Chard, please escort her. She's been patient. She's watched both talks, so why not? But you know what? Just because she didn't have your cards read on stage, we're going to be doing readings just down this hallway at Mysterium Philippines until 10 p.m. tonight. So we welcome you all to pass by because the readings will definitely change your life. Where'd she go? She got lost? Oh no, the ghost got her. <laughs> all right. Round of applause for this lovely lady. Nice to meet you, ma'am. All right, so what is your question today? Oh, uh... <laughs> Let me guess, love life? So she wants to go to the States. Let's consult the tarot to see how it will look for her. All right, round of applause for this lovely lady's dream. Okay, it's not as difficult as you think. All the problems, all the stress, all the anxiety is coming from you. I know firsthand how stressful it can be to apply for a visa or to try to go to the States. But believe it or not, you're going to realize at the end of everything that you were just overstressing things. and So just take it easy. Enjoy yourself. You know the universe is backing you up. As a result, the minute you get your visa and the minute you're on your way, you're going to say, why was I kicking myself so much to begin with? Round of, of applause for this lady's lovely dream. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. You can step, you, uh, just pass by our booth later on if you want more. So for those of you who want to experience more, I'm going to be doing book signings at our booth for the next 30 minutes. The Mysterium Tarot Association will be having readings there. If you want to know more about our programs, be it tarot, be it Reiki, or anything in between, we would love to have you. Well, once again, thank you very much. It's been an honor. History Cron 2018, more power to you all. See you guys at the booth.